Welcome back. Uh, we have with us Shantanu Khosla, Managing Director, Crompton Griefs Consumer Electricals. Uh, thank you, Mr. Khosla. Well, I just want to first place one caveat on the table. There was a suggestion, uh, a national policy that we should not have a 12 and an 18% slab and they should be merged. But our reporters have made it very clear from their sources that this is not imminent. It's like not happening in the next GST Council meeting because 18% slab is a very large revenue earner for the government. So, uh, putting that caveat, uh, I want to ask you, how can things get, suppose the two were to be merged and the merged number is say 16% rather than 15, uh, how would your products be impacted? Well, uh, first, reducing the slabs, uh, I believe, is a good thing. Whatever be the level they reduce it to, less slabs is better than more slabs because it'll just... Uh, reduce complexity. Now, as far as our business goes, we've got some businesses at 18%, like uh, fans and appliances, and we've got other businesses which currently are charged 12%, like light, lighting, for example. So the exact impact depends on where the final rate comes uh, and what that weighted number is. But the reality is, whatever reduction there may be, if there is, uh, as we've always done, we would pass on the benefit of that uh, straight to the consumer in terms of reducing prices. Okay, so as so, goods uh, become more affordable to the consumer as the tax slab goes down or, or rather at least becomes one merged, uh, what do you think the uh, this would do to demand? How is demand currently and what kind of growth do you assume? Well, overall demand is uh, continued to be quite strong through January, February. As you're probably aware, demand was really strong in uh, October, November, December. And we've seen uh, trends uh, more or less continue as we moved into 21. Clearly uh, stronger than they were in uh, pre-COVID times. So that looks robust right now. The, the real headwind which the industry is facing and we are facing right now, which I think one of your earlier speakers before the break mentioned, is commodity costs. Commodity costs have gone up uh, at unprecedented rates to unprecedented levels. In fact, if I uh, take September 20 as the base, key materials for us like copper and steel have gone up close to 35%. Now, this has never happened before. and. Uh, Obviously, it's, it is a headwind, which uh, we're working with a combination of cost saving, pricing, mix to counteract, but it will take some time for us uh, to recover commodity prices. Uh, prices. For the moment itself, uh, Mr. Khosla, how are you all managing for the fourth quarter? Will you be taking a little, shaving off a little bit of your margins? I think in the third quarter, you reported gross margins of 32% uh, and EBITDA margins uh, uh, at uh, about 14.9. So you will be willing to sacrifice a bit in the fourth quarter. Uh, separately, if you are passing on prices, if you have already, is that beginning to show up in terms of impacting demand? Well, uh, obviously, with this level of commodity price increase and the strength of our brand, uh, we have taken price increases. In fact, uh, over the last three months, we've taken two rounds of uh, uh, price increases across most of our business, as has a lot of the industry. Up, to, up till now, um, the price increases seem to be going through. As I mentioned, demand continues to be uh, reasonably strong, though it is still early days. Now, that being said, along with pricing, we continue to drive uh, out cost from the system. But when you have unprecedented, unprecedented levels of commodity increase, you can't recover all the margin at the same, in the same quarter itself. So we will recover, but it, uh, it will take a couple of quarters depending on how the commodity prices move in the future. Uh, a couple of more questions. Um, the, is there any kind of supply chain disruption that the company is seeing or the industry is seeing at the moment? And, uh, you know, what is the expectation as far as the PLI benefits are concerned? I mean, I know two separate questions, but since we are running out of time, just wanted to sort of club them in. No, uh, so our supply chain at least is uh, pretty stable, operating with all COVID norms and safety parameters in place. 
and by and large there have been no material disruptions over the last uh, few months things in th since things have settled uh, as 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 far as pli goes it's uh, obviously something where the details still have to be announced especially with regard to our categories it could be an opportunity but uh, we'll have to wait till the specific notifications and details are actually uh, finalized before we can uh, comment on or finalize any plans moving forward. Okay. Uh, just a final number if you can share. Last time you said when we asked you about consumer offtake, you said it was down to 10% on a year on year basis. It's caught up now. You're, now you would uh, guide for a higher consumer offtake? The, the latest the latest uh, consumer offtake numbers which we've got uh, for the period November, December and the encouraging good news is that uh, for fans where we have the most robust data, consumption offtake grew 9% which is uh, higher than it used to be traditionally pre-COVID, it used to be 6-7. That might be part of the pent-up demand uh, coming in in, the, in that quarter. So. But that being said, the positive growth of consumer offtake is very encouraging and the fact that we're continuing to see good demand in terms of our primary and secondary sales to the trade is encouraging looking forward. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Maybe it's not all that pent up as people work from home. You just need uh, perhaps uh, two fans in one room. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> quite possible. Thank you very much, Mr. Gosta. Pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much. Take care. Okay, quickly run you through the past financials of the company. Uh, we'll have the revenue picture coming up for you in the past five years and then the EBITDA trend and the profit after tax. Okay, oh. there you are. Okay, wow, look at that. Big move yeah. coming in the last Going from strength five, to strength. Hour, uh, five years. Let's take a quick break on that note. When we come back, we'll chat about the oil and gas sector. In